Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and in tonight's Einstein Analytics video, we're going to be covering how to measure the amount of time that has lapsed between two date fields. So uh, I've got an extremely simplistic data flow uh, loaded up right here. I'm just gonna digest off these, and I'm gonna look at the created and closed dates. I'm gonna do a little math on them. So I've got a very uh, you know straightforward compute expression here. Days open, months open, quarters open, years open. Uh, we are using the date diff function to do this. Uh, we do also have the uh, days between function that is a little bit older and uh, you know kind of deprecated. I don't recommend using it, not because it doesn't get the job done, but just you should get in the habit of using this function to measure the amount of time that has passed. In a quick pinch, you can also just do math on the day epic with simple addition and subtraction. I'm gonna pass in the day uh, subpart for uh, my first argument of the date diff function to say that I want to measure the number of days and then I'm gonna take the uh, my created date and I need to convert it into a date so that the function can use it uh, the docs make it seem like it's a little bit easier than that it's really not uh, big core of the problem is that Einstein analytics uh, deep in its innermost self just like me does not understand time at all it really only understands integers and strings. And the way that Einstein Analytics wraps its little brain around uh, what is a date uh, is very similarly to the way that I do it because I do it with Einstein Analytics. Uh, it breaks the date into different uh, subfields. The created date year, created date month, created date day, uh, week, quarter, hour, minute, second, etc. Uh, and then it also has two measure fields, the uh, second epics and the, or the second epic and the day epic. And the reason that it does this is because we can group by dates, we can group by combinations of the different parts of dates. Uh, we can also measure the difference between time, we can add uh, amounts to time. So it really is this composite field and so that's how Einstein Analytics interprets it. There is uh, you know, some uh, efforts on the roadmap to improve this, but I'm not gonna be talking about this uh, that tonight because uh, I really don't have the info. You wanna know more about it? Talk to the product team, see what they're gonna do about it. So uh, why do I use the epics? Well, because whenever you, we use the epics, we've just reduced to a simple numerical system. We don't have to deal with the format of what our dates are in. And it's just generally easier to mess with than trying to manipulate date parts or multiple date parts. But if you were gonna do, for example, just create a date, you would also need to pass in the format of that field. So I would say, for example, yyyy, dash mm dash dd as my format uh so another thing that you might run across is if you uh are like why is it that um it returned the 45th day of january there's no such thing well it's because you did not capitalize mm and a lowercase mm is actually going to be minutes and not months so very important to keep in mind when messing with date fields uh, but I use the epics because then we don't need to pass in any kind of parameter uh, to, to declare the format of the field because it's just taking an integer. Uh, another thing to be aware of is that in a data flow, the now function is going to return an epic second, while in the SQL editor on the dashboard level, the now function is going to return a date time. And the important distinction to be aware of there is that uh, you're, you are or are not going to pass in this, uh, this date format um, argument to your date diff function or to your to date function, depending on where you are. Otherwise, this should behave exactly the same. Uh, so then in addition to doing it for days, I also do it for months. We're just passing in month instead. Uh, and I do it for quarter and year. And if you want more information about which of the date parts are supported, the answer is, well, actually all of them. And you can find this in the documentation or by Googling SQL date functions, which is uh, totally purple in my search history forever. So now we're gonna look at some of the data that that created. So notice, like I said, that my created date is a date time. And so without any uh, chicanery, this is how it's naturally going to be digested in a date time format. And because I'm in the Eastern time zone or anywhere else in the known world today, uh, Einstein Analytics will return all date times in GMT format. This is a known limitation of the product right now. I will have a different video for how to convert to your local time zone. So now the, uh, the epics, we need to take a quick pause and take a look at these guys. 
these are epics in the form of milliseconds, despite the fact that they are called epic seconds. And what this is measuring is the number of milliseconds that have passed since January 1st, 1970. And if you want more information about uh, epics in general, or if you need a converter, go to epicconverter.com to flip your dates and your epics back and forth. Uh, it's actually a really great site, and I use it all the time. It, it you know, it's, I wish my calculator had this function. So now let's take a look at what our return actually was. So uh, looks off the bat pretty good. Uh, we got a 10 right here because we entered on July 19th and we completed on July 29th. One thing to be aware of though, is you may wanna actually go back to your formula and add a plus one. Why would you wanna do that? Well, a record that's uh, created on Monday and finished on Monday, well, that's gonna have a date diff of zero days. And from a business perspective, you may think that if it came in on Monday and it finished on Monday, how long was I actually working that? One business day. So you might wanna return a one. Similarly, Monday through Friday would return four, but from a business perspective, you may interpret that as five. So you always wanna consult with the business and decide what from their perspective is most logical. And if they see you know, four, are they gonna think it started on Monday and ended on Thursday? Or are they gonna think it started on Monday and ended on Friday? That's really a call for the business to make. Either way, it's a simple tweak to the formula. Now, where does the engine actually start picking up ones in our month open? So if we look at this row right here, it's not super impressive. It's only got 11 days. Does Einstein Analytics magically decide at 11 days we're gonna start rounding up? Well, if that was the case, why is this next 11 and this next 12 only, you know, not going up to one month? Well, it's because what's actually determining that is that we've gone from July to August. So even if the days between was only you know, uh, one, because we went from uh, you know, the last day of July to the first day of August, we would still, still see a change of one because we have crossed a month to month boundary. And where we really see this uh, shine out uh, prominently is on this row right here, where we go from uh, December 29th, 2016 to January 11th, 2017. We see that that's 13 days, but we crossed a month threshold, a quarter threshold, and a year threshold. So we got a one in all those values. And again, if you, uh, from a business perspective, if you feel that this record existed in two different years, you're gonna to wanna to add a one to that. Now, if you feel that, uh, you know, hey, this record is only 13 days old, why are we saying that it's been open for a year? Well, it's because it crossed that boundary. So understanding how this data returns and how to interpret these numbers, especially ones, is gonna be something that you wanna strongly brief your end users on so that they're comfortable with their understanding of how that calculation works. And if they want a different calculation, that's probably gonna to have to be something that you build custom. For example, unless it's been at least six months in one day, we're not gonna round up to a year. You have fun with that formula, and if you have problems with it, feel free to mention me on the community, but I'm probably not gonna make a video on it. So anyway, that's all we have to cover for tonight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. And if you did, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and as always, thanks for watching.